We uh, are in this beautiful place. And if you guys are wondering where can I go to visit this beautiful place, ah, you can't. It's Brooks. <laughs> <laughs> We're on the good old farm, Belvedere Farm, as uh, we have. You'll see many dogs yep, running too. amongst today. Uh, see but we are beautiful in... vines that they've just planted from our Napa trip. They got inspired and planted some vines. Yeah, you're going Chamberson. And... We have. 16 Chamberson, 16 Vidal Blanc, and then if you pan to the other side, we have uh, figs and pears and plums and cherries and apples and, and husbands. I love and this. Husbands, husbands and dogs. dogs. And, yeah. <laughs> and there's bees, which is why we're going to be talking about honey in a little bit yes. uh, because everything's about honey. So we thought a beautiful Chardonnay to start with because um, you get a lot of honey flavors usually in Chardonnay, and this is Behringer. Yes, this is about their Delicious. private reserve Chardonnay. Yeah. Uh, everybody, of course, knows Behringer and they think of uh, the White Zin. But Behringer has been known throughout uh, the, the wine world as being some of the best Chardonnay and some of the best um, Cabernets, too. So definitely Chardonnay, it, gets, it always wins war. And if you watch, skipping, sorry, I skipped a little bit there, it wins a lot of awards. But also if you watch Psalm, it was the one wine that tricked the one guy that was testing for Master Psalm. A lot of times because it's so, it varies greatly, right? I mean, yeah. Depending on how it's aged and what form, obviously terroir, but it is right. a, it's a broad varietal. Mm -hmm. It really and is. And this is on a little sweeter side too. This is not overly sweet, but just like it's a got perfect creamy, amount. Yeah. And, and then it does have, mm -hmm. it does have the butter. Um, but before we go on with more honey stuff and what we're doing. Yes. We took a few months off, and we, we didn't did. mean to take a few months off. We didn't? Well, not really intentional. It's it was just summer. Life, life just happened. Life really you know, happened. someone went to Alaska. Yes, someone I did. Someone went to Alaska. It was awesome. It was some great looking photos yes. there. Um, I actually started a new company. Yes. So I'm taking big, big business moves over here. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So I did, uh, I left my distributor, and which I loved everybody there, but it was a great distributor. I really do, was proud working there. But I started a touring company called called Buy the Glass Tours, and it's B U Y or B T G dot com. Yep. Yes. B T G Tours dot com. Um, but we are taking people to different wineries. If you're local and you want to go see wineries, distilleries, or breweries, yep. all three. We do not discriminate when it comes to alcohol. <laughs> we are an equal opportunity tour group. That's right. Uh, as long as you're over 21, we will take you. You can do your own personal tours. We've got some friends doing some personal tours. You did a personal tour to DC to do a bourbon tasting, right? Great day. Yeah. Oh my gosh, such a fun day. We so, think we stopped at a, uh, a brewery as mm -hmm. well. And yeah, had a little wine too. We had a little bit of everything yeah. that day. Yeah, and we didn't have to drive. That was the best part. <laughs> That's the best part. Yeah, we do the driving. You yeah. don't. And I'm on the tour to help you if you guys have questions, or also just give you know education, advice, whatever, yeah. whatever. Um, you help. name it, give you a call, right? Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. BTGtours.com. And how about yourself? I know you've got some craziness going on. You know, I'm just, I don't even know at this point. You were running a campaign and that took a I lot. Was, yes, running mm -hmm. a campaign, running a business, uh, not sleeping. Yes. But now we're pumping the brakes now a little bit, diving yeah. back into uh, just new things. But I have met a lot of people these past few months um, and we will get to that a little bit later. So I'm super excited. We're going to be doing some fun events at Gwen's yep. spot. We have Bee Week at the end of September. Uh, Bee's Knees yep. is what, so that's going to be, and I'm partnering with Bar Hill on that. We'll be at No Time to Cook serving up mm -hmm. different kinds of Bee's Knees cocktails. Yeah, so. yes. I think you'll talk a little bit more about that later, Absolutely. but it yep. is a company out of Vermont, a distillery out of Vermont, and everything they do, they have a vodka, gin, and a gin that they age in yes. bourbon barrels. Mm -hmm. But there's honey infused in all of it, and it is it's off amazing. the charts. So good, it's amazing. So good. And like people say, they don't like gin. They haven't had bar the right gin. exactly, yeah. and it's also um, it is rated 
the number one, it's the rate, the highest rating spirit overall, yeah. like highest rated anything. If there's no vodka, tequila, bourbon that comes close, it rates a 100 score and it is just, it's ridiculously good. Yeah. It's really good. And they only make three spirits, which is something to say. Yeah. Well, they, they focus on it hey. and they do, they do it well. Exactly. They stay in the yeah. lane and they do it beautifully. Yep. Why Same switch around. it up when you're getting top <laughs> scores, baby? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> So, of course, the other thing uh, we thought it would be fun to film on the farm was because you started raising bees. I did. You know, we go to Napa. We <laughs> we come home. I buy all these plants you see around me, make a whole orchard with. I thought this place was going to be tiny and now it's huge. And uh, then I start raising bees. So that we started that in April and we have two hives. We'll make sure you guys get a little sneak peek of that. Um, it is such a process. Bees are so brilliant. I mean, between the pollens coming in on their legs to how they defend their hive. I told you guys earlier how I saw them take down a wasp. That was pretty awesome. Really? I'm they all attacked and I took bees them down. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, just, you know, I've, I've been learning so much. Going in there, you have to inspect them weekly. It really is a mm. job. Um, to realizing how the environment works with them, I nectar flow. Uh, in the beginning, when we first got them, they had no issue making honey. Uh, in the middle of summer, we had an issue because you see we're surrounded by all this beauty, but there wasn't enough nectar. Oh. So then I had to change their simple syrup. Little did I know that they need different ratios. And then at that point, once they start making up enough honey, you have to make sure they're making enough babies. Oh. So it's a balancing act. So and you had to make simple syrup for them to yes. consume? Well, it I works out really well that you're a mixologist, I right? You. I mean, you do that every day of life I much. had my beekeeper, so I do have a mentor. He came out to just check everything, and I started, uh, I took my empty wine bottles with simple syrup, started pouring it in the Recycling. hive, and he goes, mm -hmm. Recycling. that's a first. I've never seen, he goes, that's so smart. I've never seen someone just use it, just pour it on in there like that. I'm like, I'm telling you. I make drinks for a living. This is just so much more simpler to me. You just figured well, out those bees needed and pour it in there. I, exactly. So right now it's just figuring out the perfect ratio because one hive, uh, we have overproducing honey and we have another that's overproducing babies. So oh, it's all oh. about mixing up their simple syrup to where they can be doing both. Cool. Now, will you plant flowers so next, that they have more of a natural nectar? That's my plan for next year. See, we're too far into the season yeah. to do that, but I want to do a whole field of wildflowers. Oh, I think that would be really cool. That would beautiful. Be beautiful. And be beautiful, yeah. yeah. Less less lawn to cut, more wildflowers, <laughs> right? I'm, I'm okay with that. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, I'm loving this Chardonnay. I am too. And I made something yummy to go with it. A Should little... we go check it out? Let's, Let's do it. Go check it out. All right. Come on in. <laughs> All right, let's make a cocktail with Bar Hill. So what's really cool about this company is that they make everything with real honey. So they're the only vodka on the market that makes, um, that distills with four pounds of honey, which is like super aggressive and amazing because we love honey. They have their own beekeepers. Um, and actually the distiller, was a beekeeper at first and then became and then got into the spirits game. So it's just kind of a cool scenario. But today we are going to be making a fantastic cocktail using, and I thought this was a lemon, but we're gonna be using an orange. <laughs> On that note, you know what? When life gives you an orange that you thought was a lemon, you're gonna use it because I guarantee it's gonna be really good. And I also have the ice cube in there. So that's a fail. All right, so we're gonna do one peach slice, one what I thought was a lemon. So use that at home, folks. We're gonna use an orange. I'll let you know in about five seconds if it's good. So we're gonna start muddling, but mixing a citrus with another citrus probably won't be a bad thing, I would assume. And you can honestly use any of Bar Hill spirits. All of them are good, um, but muddling, we're just gonna make sure that's nice and smashed. Explain why you muddle so much. Why do I muddle so much? Because we want everything to be nice and juiced. And a lot of people ask me, do you keep the rind on? Absolutely, we want all those citruses, all those flavors, all the oils, okay? We're gonna add a fourth of an ounce of agave because a little goes a long way with agave. You could use honey. My thing without using honey when it comes to this is a honey simple syrup um, is great, but you have to use a ton for it to get potent sweetness. Um, and if you use honey raw, it tends to clump up. So you want it warm if you do use that. We're gonna be using the vodka today. And today when we're sipping with Nikki and Gwen, we're actually gonna be using the gin, but you know, 
When in Rome, we're gonna try something different because we already, already did that with the orange. Two ounces of Bar Hill product, your choice. We're gonna do half an ounce of water. All right. So we should have agave, Bar Hill, an orange, a peach, and we're good to go. We're gonna shake that up. Nicole. If you use a lemon instead of an orange, I'm just asking for a Absolutely, <laughs> if you use a lemon instead of an orange. Doesn't this <laughs> look like, am I wrong? Audience, audience. And by the three people in front of me, tell me this looks like a lemon. It, yeah. it looks like a lemon. Okay. It tripped me. I'm crazy. Small, but orange. I was like, but and plot twist. <laughs> All right. Flexibility. So you always want this nice and frosted. I, hopefully you can see that, I'm not sure. And last but not least, something kind of cool we did today. Um, as you see, honey always drips. We have the Bar Hill honey we use. And then this is actually bee pollen. And what the heck would I use bee pollen for, Brooke? That's so weird. Um, it is meant to enhance yogurt, cereals, and salads. Um, but, you know, when in doubt, put it on your cocktail because what we can do with this is you can try it on the side without uh, and get a lot of flavor, but also you can try it with the bee pollen and get a different type of taste. So it just makes it very versatile. So audience, is this good with an orange? Yeah, it's fantastic. Cheers. A cocktail. Oh, she stopped and licked her lips. <laughs> All right, here we are with the fire pit and I can tell this dog is a, they, these cocktails are so good, the dog wants one. Yeah. They're really good. Right? They are our dogs. So it does makes it surprise sense. anyone that our dogs enjoy a good cocktail I'm in the evening? I'm just not shocked at all. <laughs> uh, but to tell you guys uh, what I decided to do, I wanted to make it a good summer finish, right? We are in September. We have to make it fantastic. That's so right. we have a little bit of peach, a little bit of lemon. We have bee or pollen. Orange. Or orange. And, or orange. You know, God forbid, depending okay, on what I pollen. decided to make. But this is a gin cocktail. Uh, we talked a little bit about Bar Hill. They make all their products with honey. And I'd like to make a note that there is a right and a wrong way to make honey, which who knew? I didn't know that until just recently. If you use too much heat when you are extracting honey from the hive, you are killing the nutrients and all the natural benefits of having honey. So Bar Hill uses little to no heat to extract all of their honey. And they have a specific... Um, team that runs their own apiary to do all their honey so that way they can fully focus on the health of the bees to make sure that they're good so they're a really cool company i think we need to go to vermont and see their um, on-premise location oh, we could awesome. totally arrange that yes. but if well prior a, to that i have a tour company now so we can do that Ooh, you do <laughs> right by the glass talk but uh, in the meantime you can come to no time. Yes. At the mm. end of the month. So yes. For Bees Knees Week, I think it's the fourth Sunday of the month. And you're going to be there yep. with Nathan from Bar Hill. So mm. excited Shaking to Shaking up some amazing drinks. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that's And he's super nice. Five. So great company. Um, we're working with his DC rep. And uh, they are just really good people. And I'm super excited to work that event. Yeah. One, I just admire cocktails. And he was so pumped. He goes, actually, I want you to do some creative takes as well. And I'd love for you to help me. And I'm like, heck yeah. Yeah. So well, they they have the longest line of anyone at any oh, yeah. wherever All they the are events. at an event. At our place Bar Hill. and we should also back up to say that the bees knees week is that last yes. week in September mm -hmm. and it is a really cool promotion yeah. that they do so I'll be there to, I believe the 25th yeah and it's, September. it's about bee restoration worldwide so the, Which I think is they, they they donate a portion of their profits yep. from yeah. sales that week to encourage yeah. Bee yeah, so we want to save we want to save the bees. Well, they're so oh, no, important to the entire entire ecosystem. Yes. Oh my gosh! It, absolutely, and and we you know, you guys know my husband and I love to everything about the ocean. We want to save everything about the ocean, but we are also passionate about the bees. I am thinking maybe I need to be a beekeeper now because they get rid of wasps. Which yeah, I do hate wasps. <laughs> I just love the honey. But I love yes. the honey. I love everything about them other than, you know, you get that fear when you hear them buzzing. You're like, oh, I don't know if I want to be close. It's nerve wracking. And you know what? I be keep without a suit. I was just going to ask you if you had the whole like suit. I do Girl, own one. Wow. I don't do it at all because that's my brave. mentor said, once you put on the suit, you'll never take it off. So I took his advice. I have only been stung 
twice and I'll tell you the first time was honestly because I didn't feel it on my neck and I went like this and I accidentally crushed it I'm so sorry um, for the record be down they have a lot <laughs> so they're good <laughs> and uh, there's a we lot got more. Of more to spare they have a lot of babies quick my my queens are very active um, and then, from alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> and then the a second time it was too windy out and they do not like it so the bees work very hard to make sure that their hive is warm and stays warm so i opened it it was it was a little too windy and they were like get out skirt so other it's, than that they have little... crawled on me i have had i have had multiple of them walk on me not a single sting it's a little windy today which is why we're not going to film you over there but you have yes. a film we're going to include in there so people can Absolutely. see you actually doing the beekeeping mm -hmm. I'm going to switch really fast to talk about the cocktail because yeah. um, you made this on the fly, which I love the fact that you can do oh, the, the fly, on the fly. fly. <laughs> Plus, that's how good this fly tastes. It's you getting her a good buzz, if you know what I mean. Yes. <laughs> that joke was so bad, it stung, didn't it? Mm. All right. I'm You've done. used that before. Um, see what you did there? <laughs> Bam. I'm done. <laughs> so, yes. Um, but you are amazing at your, your talent of just picking up Thank different you. flavors. And I would never have thought of putting peach and honey together. It's just not... Not in a cocktail. Yeah, no, I think it's beautiful, especially at the end of summer. At the end of summer. It's perfect. Yeah, yeah. You got to get it, and the key here is getting getting it when the peaches are ripe. Yeah. Yes. So I went to the grocery store, and to be totally honest, I'm one of those people, this is why you wash your fruit, because I touch everything. I will not buy an unripe peach. Like, Why would you? It's the worst. That's ridiculous. Um, and I don't want to, it's just, and it's also like depressing. You have to wait for it to get ripe. Nope. Uh, they were perfect. They I know, were all I, juicy. You could tell it. I was like, this is going to be good. Yeah, I'm yeah. one of those people. I smell them. I feel them, I squish them, I smell them, like if they're, oh, yeah. you know, overripe and you're like too sweet. That's like what you're fruit, supposed to do. But like you're squishing do. it and you're yeah. like, nope, that's a little like too avocado. Wet. Well, you know, <laughs> so find yourself also a great produce stand because oh, those people yes. work with this kind of stuff every single day. Not that the grocery stores don't, but right. it's in season. I stopped at one of my favorite places, Jake's Produce, the other day, and I was looking at the cantaloupe and she said, do you want it for today or tomorrow? And I was like, no, tomorrow. And she's like, yeah. burr, burr, and she picks out just this one. <laughs> yes, you know, berries, know. and she's like, okay, use these berries today, use these berries tomorrow. Tomorrow. That's so, awesome. Well, you yes. know, we're just talking about uh, our our local farmers market that we filmed at last year. Uh, they have a new farmer, a new farm there, and this lovely lady told me about this uh, the yellow watermelon. watermelon, and it does have like a honey flavor, and it it's not like strong, but it's like one. a hint. But it, it is it's really beautiful. I've never too. had one before. And it was really great. I loved it. Yeah, I love the so gorgeous. new, exciting produce. I love. So speaking yeah. of really good food, Gwen, tell us about oh, yeah. your dish. Okay. So what I made to go with this gorgeous honey um, cocktail, it is um, a goat cheese, local goat cheese. And I love goat cheese. Right. And so because it has that tang, it has that acid that's gonna break, you know, kind of be a nice foil against the yes. sweetness. But then I topped it with a bit of fig jam, some of this Bar Hill honey, because in addition to the amazing. Um, mm -hmm. Drinks, or rather, you know, gin and vodka they make. They also produce honey. Right. right. So we, we warmed up their honey and drizzled it across, and then toasted pistachios on top. So this is going to be yeah. super yummy. You know, you'd think we we were sponsored by Bar Hill after this episode because we do love it so much, <laughs> and we really we like, do. None of it's sponsorship. No. But hey, if you're wanting I to, I was going to say yeah. Bar Hill. Just wink, wink. Um, but no, we <laughs> we do love Bar Hill. Um, I, I'm pretty sure we've used it in past cocktails. I'm sure we'll use it in future. Um, I'm just going to shout out to Behringer as well because I do, yes. people really underestimate Behringer's higher end wines because they got that reputation of the white Zin, which white Zinfandel is a rosé, just like anything else, the Zinfandel grape is a red grape. It's very big, it's got a lot of sugar in it, and when you put it in a barrel it gets dark and heavy and beautiful, but when you pull it out early it's a little bit sweeter. So people love that white Zin, there's nothing wrong with it, but do try the Behringer um, Chardonnay. Chardonnays in general do have a little bit of honey. If you get an unoaked Chardonnay, mm -hmm. it has a lot of honey uh, to it. And if even, like, I think you can still pull out the honey when you get a nice creamy oaked Chardonnay as well. So yeah. I think, I love doing this, ep like, our little episode of honey. I think yeah, it's I fun. Agree. I we, agree. We were, we were like, There's what are we so going to do? Good. Let's talk that about comes from honey. Our bees. Let's do honey. It was just fun. <laughs> it's nice to finally get here and see your bee operation and your whole oh farm. Oh my gosh. Like, you guys are really just doing amazing things here. Yes. The farm is beautiful. Your house is gorgeous. <laughs> I'm being told that there's rain behind us or something coming, so we probably yes. are going to wrap it up Should a little bit. Go in inside bit. and eat, right? So we're yeah. going to go inside and eat and drink, um, <laughs> yes. you know, because... And Shelly. And Shelly's ready too. So clearly we all got Shelly's going to be drinking our cocktails if we don't stop soon.
She's so ready. from all of us at no time. At no time. <laughs> at wine all time. Of us at, uh, all of us time. on the farm, wine time. Yes, no time. sure to like, subscribe, and follow. Share and share. <laughs> share. Oh my gosh. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs>